For the fourth proposition of Book 2 of Euclid's Elements, if a straight line be cut at random, the square on the whole is equal to the squares on the segments and twice the rectangle contained by the segments. So we're starting with some line AB and we cut this line at some random point which we'll label as C. And basically what we're trying to prove is that if we had a square formed by the line AB that this square will be equal to the squares on AC and BC plus twice the rectangle formed by AC and BC. So if you want to consider this algebraically, we could call this A and this B. And then what we're trying to prove is that if we constructed a square on the whole, so the square on AB, so that's A plus B and we're squaring it, that this is equal to the square formed by the line AC, or simply just A squared, plus the square formed by the line BC, which is just B squared, plus twice the rectangle formed by the segments. So twice the rectangle formed by A and B, or in other words, just twice the product of A and B, because remember, or keep in mind that the Greeks thought of multiplication as just forming rectangles. So proving this statement will also prove this statement. So to start this proof, let's first begin by just constructing a square on the line AB. And we can label this square with this point as being E and this point here as being D. So we just constructed the square A, B, D, E using book one, proposition number 46. And let's connect the points B and E, which we can do because of postulate number one, which says we can draw a straight line between any two points. And at this point, let's construct a line CF that's parallel to the line BD. And we can do this because of book one, proposition number 31. So let's construct that line. And we can also label this point here as point G. And then through this point G, let's construct the line MK that's parallel to the line AB. And again, this is just using book one, proposition number 31. And from here, now that we essentially have our figure constructed, what we wanna do first is to prove that this figure here and this figure here are both squares. So to do that, let's recognize that this line CF and AE are parallel lines and that they have a transversal EB going through them. So that means that this angle here would be equal to this angle here. So in other words, this exterior angle CGB is equal to this interior and opposite angle AEB. So let's write that, that CGB is equal to the angle AEB. And this is true because of book one, proposition number 29. And if we focus on essentially this triangle here, then what you can notice is that the line AB and AE are equal since this entire figure is just a square. And if both of these lines are equal to each other, then the angles opposite those lines are equal as well. So this angle here, ABE, is equal to the angle AEB. And using common notion number one, they're both equal to CGB. So AEB is equal to angle ABE. And this is due to book one, proposition number five, and is true for all isosceles triangles. And we'll essentially use the converse of book one, proposition five in this triangle here since in this case, we have two angles that are equal to each other. And this implies that the sides opposite those angles are equal. 
So using book one, proposition number six, we know that the line CG is equal to the line BC. And since this figure here, we know for sure it's a parallelogram. And we also know that within parallelograms, opposite sides and opposite angles are equal. So this line BC would also be equal to GK, and the line CG would be equal to BK. So in other words, all of these side lengths are equal to each other. So let's write that down, that CG and BC are also equal to GK and BK. And this comes from book one, proposition number 34. And we're also using common notion number one, since things that are equal to the same thing are equal to each other. So we've proven so far that all of the sides are equal here, but now we have to prove that all of the angles are right angles. And we know this angle here, this ABD, this is a right angle since the entire figure is a square. And opposite angles in a parallelogram are equal, which means that this is a right angle here. But to prove that, let's say FCB, this angle up here, to prove that that's a right angle, we need to use this book one, proposition number 29 again, since we have these two parallel lines, this CF and BD, and we have this transversal AB cutting across them. And it's true that the interior angles between two parallel lines, these angles here have to add up to two right angles. But we already know one of them is a right angle, which implies that this angle here has to be right as well. So in essence, this angle F C B is a right angle. And if this is a right angle, then the angle opposite it is right as well. Since in parallelograms, opposite angles and opposite sides are equal to each other. So with the combination of book one, proposition 29 and book one, proposition 34, we know that all of these angles are equal and they're right angles. So let me write that down. So now that we've proven that all of the angles are equal and they're right angles, and we also know that all the sides are equal, we can conclude that this quadrilateral CK is a square. So let's write that down, that the quadrilateral here, the CBKG, or in other words, just CK, is a square. And the truth is, you would use the exact same arguments to prove that MF is a square. So I'll leave that as an exercise to prove on your own, but it is true using pretty much these exact same arguments that MF is a square as well. So let me just write down that MF is a square as well. And now that we've proven that each of these are squares, let's take a closer look at the lines that contain these squares. So let's look at CK first. CK, we can say, is a square contained by the line BC. So we can rewrite this square on CK as the square contained by the line BC and BC. And this square on MF, you can see that this line AC and MG are equal to each other since in this quadrilateral or in this parallelogram, opposite sides are equal to each other. And since this is a square, then we can say this square MF is contained by the lines AC and AC. So let's write that down, that the square on MF is just the square contained by the lines AC and AC. So at this point, let me just refocus what we're doing. So what we're trying to prove is that this entire square here, this entire figure, is essentially composed of the square on AC plus the square on BC plus twice the rectangles contained by the lines AC and BC. So we've proven that this figure here and this figure here, these are the squares on BC and AC. 
But now we just have to prove that this rectangle and this rectangle, when added together, are equal to twice the rectangles formed by the segments AC and BC. So let's start by just looking at this rectangle AG. And this rectangle is contained by the lines AC and AM. But AM would be equal to CG because this is a parallelogram and they're opposite sides. But CG is equal to BC. So this rectangle here is really contained by AC and BC. So let me write that down that the rectangle on AF is just simply the rectangle contained by AC and BC. And now going up and focusing on this last rectangle here, this rectangle GD, this is the rectangle formed by the line BC since BC and GK are equal and also the line GF. But this line GF is equal to the line GM and GM is equal to AC. So really this rectangle here is contained by the lines BC and AC. So we can actually say that the rectangle AF is equal to the rectangle GD and that the rectangle GD is just contained by AC and BC. So we've proven that both of these rectangles here are contained by the lines AC and BC. They're contained by these segments. And there's two of them and they're both the same, so that's this part of our proof. And we've also proven that this square here is just the square on BC, which is this part here. And this here, this last quadrilateral out of these four here, this is just the square on AC, which is right here. And when you add all of these things together, what you get is this entire square. And since we've just proven this statement, we can end by writing QED.